Hello everyone and welcome back to PC RetroTech. In the past few weeks we've been going through some PCI Socket 3 motherboards trying to answer the question of whether the later PCI boards perform better than the older Visa Local Bus ones. We already had a series on the channel on the Visa Local Bus boards and we've looked at two PCI boards so far and up to this point uh, they seem to be roughly neck and neck. I think the highest score we've had on a Visa Local Bus board is 16.6 .6 frames per second in the Quake benchmark. Uh, that was with a 5x86 at 160 megahertz. And uh, the highest score we've had from a PCI board so far is 16.8, so very, very close. And we actually had one uh, of the older boards with 512 kilobytes of cache on board. Uh, for a single run, very late at night, gives 16.9, but it's not on camera and not repeatable, so it uh, doesn't really count. Uh, but anyway, I'm hopeful that uh, with some of these later chipsets, uh, that we might actually be able to do better than that, in particular if we can get a 60 MHz front side bus on one of these boards, we have a chance of running the CPU at 180. Uh, so you can see that this board is based on the SIS 85C496 chipset and it has uh, 256 kilobytes of cache on board. Uh, it's got onboard uh, floppy and hard drive controllers. This is the tag RAM for the cache by the way. Uh, I can't upgrade the cache unfortunately because I don't have any larger chips. They're rare as hen's teeth, uh, the one megabit chips. Uh, you'll notice that there's a huge number of uh, jumpers on this board and that's a bit problematic uh, because I don't have a manual and at the moment I don't know what this board is. Uh, it says T594V-0 which may just be a PCB number, I'm not sure. And presumably a date code 9647 uh, being the year and the week. Uh, the only other thing, it says RevC2 in the middle here but I don't see uh, a model number for the board anyway. So that is a little bit problematic. I might have to go poking around uh, with a multimeter to see which pins these jumpers are connected to. Fortunately we do have a voltage regulator on this board so I'm expecting that it will support 3.3 volt chips. Uh, but there's not much more I know about it at the moment. The only other thing is that it came with some memory in it and this appears to be 60 nanosecond memory. Uh, which is probably Edo RAM, so that's good. Uh, this board looks like it will support that. Uh, but the first order of business is for me to do some investigation and try and figure out what this board is. Well guys, it didn't turn out to be that difficult to identify this board. Uh, in fact, I just put in the search terms Socket 3 Rev C2, which is all the information we have, and the first thing that came up was a hit on a very short video without words uh, just showing this particular motherboard powering up and it's identified in the title of the video as a Lucky Star LS486E Rev C2 board. Now uh, there is a page at Ultimate Hardware 2019 uh, for this particular board. Unfortunately uh, there's not any other information here that's useful to us like jumper settings or uh, BIOS or anything like that. Uh, but we can identify that this is the correct board uh, from the photograph. And so I've had a look around online and indeed I actually managed to find a scan of a manual for this particular board. As you can see from the manual it looks like we're out of luck uh, on the 60 MHz front side bus front. Uh, this board really supports 25, 33 and 40 only. Although it is possible that there are some jumper settings that are not included in the manual. So we will try those out and see if it will run at the higher uh, front side bus speeds. Uh, but I'm not hopeful at this point. But the manual does confirm that it supports Edo RAM. Uh, it'll support 3.3, 3.45, 5 volt CPUs. And uh, it also confirms that uh, it will support DX2 and DX4, which are the things that we're going to need in order to get the AMD uh, 5x86 working at 160 megahertz. So that's great news. Yeah, it seems like there's a full set of CPU configurations for uh, all the different kinds of CPUs. Even our chip is listed, the AMD 5x86P75, and uh, just set it up for that particular configuration. Well, that didn't take long to set up, and I have to say I really like the layout of the jumpers on this board. Uh, it's very logical and very easy to identify which jumper is which. 
uh, very well labeled and it's also easy to follow the manual so I have it set up now for the AMD 5x86 just running at the ordinary 133 MHz with the 33 MHz front side bus. I've left in the original Edo 60 nanosecond RAM that came with the board for now and I'm just using my Sanglabs ET6000 video card which we actually know will run at 50 MHz, that's not been tried at 60. Uh, so I'm going to do a smoke test and just power it up and see whether it actually works. So I hear the hard drive starting up and oh that is annoying so I, I'm not getting a picture on the screen so this is <laughs> a bad start unfortunately. Uh, I had hoped that it would just power up first go but that is not the case so some troubleshooting to be done. Well I've actually tried a number of things and uh, it does seem like it's a dead board uh, which is really surprising. So uh, I tried a different video card, different memory, tried moving memory about, uh, tried different CPUs, even a 5 volt CPU which would bypass the voltage regulator. And uh, yeah, really did all the obvious things, checked if there are any chips getting hot, etc. Uh, so this board does look to be dead, uh, so I'm going to have to pull the multimeter out and uh, check some voltages at least. Uh, and see if there's not something trivial causing it. Of course there are capacitors on this board. Uh, it could be that one of those has died over the years. Uh, but yeah, it's a bit of a mystery. The board looks optically in good condition, so uh, very surprising if it doesn't work. Uh, but that seems to be the state of play at the moment. Before I get too deeply into debugging here, I'm just going to lift uh, all of the case chips and uh, check that I didn't bend a pen or something like that. Uh, when I reinserted these into the board. These are the 32 pin chips uh, that I tried in the motherboard that takes those and uh, it's possible that I just reinserted them badly uh, so we'll check that out first and uh, then I'll move on to checking some voltages. Well I went through and checked all of the case chips and they all seem to be seated correctly. I also cleared the BIOS uh, just in case there was a bad BIOS setting in there and I uh, tried resetting the board of course, some boards uh, just spring to life when you press the reset button and I've been through and done a very careful visual inspection to make sure there's nothing wrong so uh, it's time to check voltages and what I'm going to do is power up uh, the board and I'm going to measure the rails first uh, just to check that uh, it's getting the voltages that are expected uh, from the power supply. I'm not expecting any problems here but uh, always worth checking. Uh, so we get 5 volts, 5 volts and it should be 12 and then we should have minus 12. Well that's a little low but uh, it's certainly within spec. Uh, 5 volts, 5 volts, 5 volts and we should have minus 5. Uh, a little low again but that's fine. Now the other voltage I want to check is the voltage going to the CPU and that'll be uh, one of the pins on the voltage regulator which I assume is this, yeah, so 3.44 volts, the middle pin, uh, this is the top pin and that's 5 volts which is what's going into the voltage regulator. So that's all working perfectly. Uh, so uh, unfortunately there really aren't a lot of other things to check. In fact I've already been over this board and checked uh, diodes, uh, there's a transistor here, uh, all seem to be okay. And as far as I can tell the capacitors are alright in circuit but uh, what I'm going to do is replace each of the four capacitors around the CPU. Uh, but after that uh, I'm afraid there's just nothing else I can do with this board. Uh, failing a misconfiguration which I'm really quite certain in this case I haven't made. Um, there aren't any other large bulky components on here that are prone to failure and so there's really not much more I can do. Uh, unfortunately if a chipset fails uh, or if there's a dodgy BIOS or something like that uh, it's going to be very hard for me to detect. I don't have another equivalent BIOS to put in here and so there really isn't anything else I can do at that point. Uh, so let's hope the capacitors work, uh, but I, yeah, I've already checked that they seem to be okay, so I think this is a bit of a long shot. To make it as easy as possible to get those capacitors out, I'm just going to use my soldering, desoldering gun here and try and suck some of the solder off uh, the pins. 
Uh, there's probably soldered on both sides, so it's more than likely not going to get all the solder out, but uh, it'll make it easier to get the capacitors off. Well, those capacitors uh, really weren't easy to get out at all. Uh, the holes in the board are extremely tight, uh, so I really had to pull them through with pliers and apply quite a lot of heat and of course getting the new capacitors on was uh, just as difficult uh, anyway I'm going to power it up I'm not expecting this to work but uh, we have to try it of course and uh, switching on I don't see anything uh, yeah it looks like there's nothing uh, so uh, I'm going to declare this board dead unfortunately uh, there's really nothing else I can think of I've been over and over it uh, so what I'm going to do instead uh, is go back to the other SIS board that we had with the earlier chipset and I want to try an experiment uh, with the 512k of cache again. Uh, we didn't manage to get that stable at uh, 160 MHz last time and I don't think I'm going to be able to get that stable but what I might be able to do is to get it to work at 120 and just do a comparison between uh, 256 and 512k cache to see whether it would have made uh, a significant difference at all in the Quake benchmark. This is the board I'm talking about based on the 85C471 chipset and I've gone through once again and put a full set of 8 uh, 32 pin uh, chips in for the cache. Now uh, these are 512 kilobit each uh, so a set of 8 of those means you have 512 kilobytes uh, I might need a, a larger uh, tagram, but uh, anyway, I'm going to set this up, and I realized, of course, I can use uh, 133 megahertz with the uh, AMD 5x86 chip, uh, then the front side bus will only be 33, so that will be the optimal uh, that I think I can do with this board. Uh, so we're going to try that out and see if we can get uh, any joy uh, with this board uh, with the large amount of cache. Then I'll go back to 256k of cache and just do a comparison and uh, see whether uh, this really makes a difference. Well, even at 133 MHz, uh, this board is not booting. Uh, it will post, uh, but it will just basically hang shortly after that, uh, partway through or even uh, before the hard drive actually starts to boot. As you can see, it's just a blank screen now. Uh, so I've actually tried every single cache jumper setting uh, on this board and so I'm becoming more and more convinced that this board really doesn't support this particular configuration of 512 kilobyte cache. Uh, so what I'm going to try now is just to remove the, uh, the jumper uh, that I'm using to get two times multiplier and just make sure that's not the issue. And uh, yeah, if that doesn't work, then it looks like we're not going to be able to get a 512k cache test on this board. So here we go with just a 3 times multiplier at uh, 33 megahertz, and it's starting to boot. And actually, it booted up, uh, so that's interesting. It looks to me like uh, the 2 times multiplier that I was setting uh, isn't really properly supported by this board. Uh, that's really odd, uh, but anyway, uh, we've, it seems we've got this far. Let's do a benchmark and see whether we can get all the way through the uh, Quake benchmark uh, with it just at 100 megahertz. Well, the answer is yes, uh, it does run at 100 megahertz, and I get a score of 9.9, .9, which is completely what we expect. Uh, this is with all of the lowest uh, BIOS settings, so I'm going to crank those up now and see if it'll run. Uh, with all of the memory and cache settings at the highest level uh, so that'll be as far as we can go at 100 megahertz and then I'll switch over to 256k and see uh, if the score goes down. Well yeah that worked absolutely fine uh, so at 100 megahertz with all of the cache and memory settings cranked up we get 10.9 frames per second which is a nice little improvement. Uh, so now I'm going to go back to the original 256k of cache that was in it uh, when I started and see where, how those scores compare. Well, there you have the answer. Uh, this is 10.3 frames a second, which is slap bang between the two results that we had before. Uh, this is, of course, with all the settings cranked up to maximum. 
Uh, so yeah, it does make a very small difference, something like uh, five or six percent, uh, which is about what you'd expect uh, for a cache increase of that size. Uh, so that answers that question definitively. Uh, it's really weird uh, that this board just won't work with a two times multiplier. Um, it's just a very strange thing that, as I said previously in the uh, previous video, uh, the actual jumper for setting two times multiplier is missing uh, on the board. It's not that it's not soldered in or something, it's just not even on this PCB. And uh, so the extra cable that I added uh, should have done the same thing. Uh, but it seems that somehow or other, the way this board is set up, uh, it just doesn't support that multiplier. Uh, but at any rate, we've answered our question about the cache, uh, so I'm hopeful for the other 486 board that I have, uh, which will uh, also take eight of these 512 kilobit cache chips. Uh, but for now, uh, I'm going to leave it there because um, uh, it's a little bit too long to go into the next board in this video. Uh, so it's just going to be a short video this week, uh, but hopefully you enjoyed this next little step along in our journey with uh, Socket 3. Uh, don't forget to look out for the next video that's coming, which will be uh, for an Intel chipset uh, Socket 3 board. Uh, very, very nice board, and uh, I'm expecting good things, although uh, Intel chipsets are not known for their speed. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but stay tuned for that. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in a later video. Bye.